In professional wrestling, matchups between wrestlers can range from epic long running feuds to one off encounters that leave a lasting impression. While recurring rivalries often dominate the storylines, some of the most intriguing and memorable moments in wrestling history come from those rare single showdown encounters. Whether it's a clash of legendary wrestlers from different eras or a cross promotional dream match, in this video we explore some of the most notable and storied examples of these singular showdowns, highlighting the special magic that unfolds when two wrestlers step into the ring together for the first and only time. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon, the ultimate wireless earbuds that deliver premium sound without the premium price. Whether you're watching classic matches, listening to wrestling podcasts, or pumping up with your favorite entrance music, Raycon has got you covered. Raycon earbuds are super comfortable, have a long battery life, and most importantly, they sound amazing. I use them every day when I'm editing videos or just chilling with some old wrestling tunes. With their noise isolating fit, I can focus entirely on the action and commentary of those epic matches without any distractions. The upgraded everyday earbuds offer everything you love about Raycon and some more because you now also get the active noise cancellation, ergonomic design and multi-point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices. And here's the best part, Raycon is offering an exclusive deal for my viewers. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash wrestling flashback to get 15% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this. So get your Raycon earbuds today and experience your wrestling flashbacks like never before. Now let's continue with today's video. The one-time encounter between Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam 2005 stands out as one of the most unforgettable matches in professional wrestling history. This clash of legends brought together two of the biggest icons in the industry for a highly anticipated and unique showdown. The match took place on August 21st, 2005 and was the culmination of a short but intense storyline. At first, Shawn Michaels reportedly expressed a preference for a face vs face matchup rather than a heel vs face dynamic. However, the creative approach for their match ultimately led to Michaels becoming the villain, attacking Hogan in the build-up to their encounter. This decision, while creating significant buzz and anticipation for their clash, may not have lined with Michael's ideal vision for the storyline. In my mind, I presented it to him as just a good guy versus good guy, and, and the thing where HBK was just like, man, I gotta know if I can beat the immortal Hulk Hogan. Leading up to the match, Michaels delivered one of the most memorable promos in WWE history. Who's your daddy, Montreal? The build-up was intense, blending reality and storyline elements, and it promised a classic encounter between the Heartbreak Kid and the immortal Hulk Hogan. The match itself was a spectacle, with Michaels known for his show-stealing performances and Hogan bringing his iconic charisma and larger-than-life presence. Michaels infamous overselling Hogan's heroic comeback were the highlights of the bout, adding a layer of entertainment and controversy to the match. In the end, Hogan emerged victorious, defeating Michaels with his trademark leg drop. After their SummerSlam encounter, disagreements emerged between Hogan and Michaels, concerning the trajectory of their feud and the possibility of a rematch. Originally, the plan involved a trilogy of matches, with Michaels securing a victory in one of the bouts to pave the way for a decision rubber match. Yet these intentions failed to materialize due to them not being on the same page creatively. Another match featuring Hogan was the match he had against Bret Hart. This unique encounter occurred on WCW Monday Nitro on September 28, 1998. The match itself didn't have a decisive conclusion, as it was interrupted by another wrestling icon, Sting. Hogan and Hart never faced each other in a singles match during their time in WWF, as they were often booked in separate storylines and feuds. The long-standing animosity between Hogan and Hart prevented what could have been a legendary showdown at any event. Despite both being active and capable performers in the 90s, this dream match never materialized due to their personal feud. Rumors suggest that the feud between Hogan and Hart began early in their careers, with Hogan reportedly refusing to put over a young Bret Hart when he first entered WWF. Hogan says you're not in his league. I remember Vince telling me almost like he's trying to piss me off. He's refusing to put you over. Hogan's refusal to work with Hart allegedly escalated to the point where he actively sabotaged Hart's career. At WrestleMania 9, Hogan walked out of the event as WWF champion when Bret Hart was actually booked to win the match. And Hogan was putting a lot of pressure on Vince to take the belt, take it off me and put it on him. And after this event, Hart confronted Hogan about not dropping the belt to him. According to accounts, Hogan mentioned striking a deal with McMahon and claimed that dropping the belt to Hart was not part of this agreement. This incident contributed to the escalated tension between the two wrestling icons and fueled the animosity that persisted throughout their careers. While they both briefly worked together in WCW, the opportunity for a significant rematch between them never arose. The idea of The Undertaker vs Sting is one of the most talked about dream matches in the history of professional wrestling. But what if we talk 
told you that that match actually happened. The match took place before both wrestlers had fully developed into the legendary personas they're known for today. Sting was already on the rise while Mark Calloway was still finding his footing in the wrestling world. The match took place in 1990 during an episode of WCW where they competed for the NWA World Heavyweight title. Sting emerged victorious in this encounter, making Mark Callis tap out. Less than three months after this match, Mark Callis left WCW and joined the WWF, where he was repackaged as The Undertaker, becoming one of the most iconic and enduring characters in wrestling history. Meanwhile, Sting continued to climb the ranks in WCW, becoming one of its biggest stars. While there were subsequent opportunities for Sting and The Undertaker to finally face each other in WWE, unfortunately, the match never came to fruition. Despite the ongoing desire from fans to witness the epic encounter, various factors prevented it from happening. Sting's arrival in WWE in 2014 sparked renewed speculation about a potential clash with The Undertaker. However, Sting's initial feud was with Triple H, leading to a match at WrestleMania 31. Sting revealed that he wanted the match with The Undertaker to be his grand send-off before his TNA contract expired in January 2014. He even reached out to Paul Levesque and Vince McMahon about it. Although McMahon was reportedly interested, The Undertaker was already booked to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. According to Sting, this was the only time he actively pursued the idea of a match with The Undertaker. The Undertaker later mentioned that he preferred not to have a match with Sting because he felt his physical condition wasn't ideal for such an encounter. He believed it would be more disappointing to have the match under subpar conditions than to never have it at all. The match would have been good, but I don't think it would have lived up to the expectations that people have for it. The eagerly awaited encounter between Sting and The Undertaker remained out of reach, leaving fans to wonder what if for years to come. In March 1993, Glenn Jacobs, known later as Kane, made a one-off appearance with WCW under the ring name Bruiser Mastino. During this appearance, he faced and lost to Sting. It's incredible to realize that Sting actually faced the Brothers of Destruction, leaving fans wishing it had happened years later when all of them were at their peaks. A match between Prime Kane and Sting would be a dream showdown for wrestling fans. The the storyline leading up to the match would also be compelling, possibly involving mind games and psychological warfare. The outcome could go either way, but regardless of the winner, it would have been a memorable clash between two icons of the business. SummerSlam 2013 stands out in wrestling history as one of the greatest editions of the event, largely due to its focus on two main event level matches. Among these, Brock Lesnar vs CM Punk captured the audience's attention with its intense, brutal nature and the underlying themes of personal betrayal and the quest for redemption. The narrative preceding the match was charged with emotion. CM Punk had recently severed ties with his longtime manager and confidant Paul Heyman. Feeling deeply betrayed, Punk harbored a desire for retaliation against Heyman, who countered by enlisting his most formidable client, Brock Lesnar, to confront Punk. No, no. After the impending clash between the best and the beast approached, CM Punk entered the arena with a twofold mission in mind. His goals were not only to showcase his prowess in defeating Brock Lesnar, but also to exact vengeance upon Heyman for his betrayal. This match stood out as one of the best matches in WWE's recent history, showcasing a clash of styles, personas, wrestling philosophies, and the chemistry between the two wrestlers, which sadly we never got to see again. Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio are two of the most innovative performers in professional wrestling history. Both are known for their aerial abilities and unique in-ring styles. Styles. Despite their long and illustrious careers, they faced each other in a notable singles match only once on WWE television. The match took place on June 7, 2006, in a distinctive event highlighting the ECW roster against WWE superstars. RVD represented ECW, while Rey Mysterio represented WWE. Mysterio held the World Heavyweight Championship at the time, but the match was not contested for the title. This contest was a rare occurrence as both wrestlers were babyfaces, and had previously teamed up frequently on SmackDown in 2004, even winning the Tag Team Championships together. They their chemistry as a tag team was exceptional, and we never doubted a match between Mysterio and Van Damme would be an exception. Their match on Raw was a no disqualification match, with RVD emerging victorious after hitting Mysterio with a 5 star frog splash. After the match, they both shook hands as a sign of mutual respect. On June 13, 2005, during the WWE draft, all WWE fans along with Triple H and Ric Flair were eagerly awaiting the next draft pick, which turned out to be none other than Kurt Angle, who was traded from SmackDown to Raw. In that very moment, he requested to have a match against the World Heavyweight Champion, Batista. Batista, in which Batista accepted. It marked only the second time that Angle and Batista were on the same show. Back in 2002, both were part of SmackDown, but Batista was just starting his WWE career, accompanying Reverend Devon to the ring in his matches. During this period, Angle and Batista never crossed paths. The much anticipated match between Angle and Batista was set for June 20th, 2005. However, the match only lasted two minutes as Triple H and Ric Flair intervened, attacking Batista. Shawn Michaels came to Batista's aid, leading to Eric Bischoff making a dream tag team match. Angle and Triple H first 
Batista and Michaels. This was the first and only time Batista and Angle faced each other in the ring since Batista was drafted to SmackDown two weeks later. Eventually, Angle's contract with WWE expired and he joined TNA. Daniel Bryan's journey to WrestleMania 30 was filled with obstacles created by the authority, mainly Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, who consistently undermined his attempts to become WWE's top star. Why can't you just accept your failure? They portrayed corporate figures who believed Bryan was unworthy of being the face of WWE. Your reality is you're a B plus player. During the Occupy Raw segment, Bryan demanded a match against Triple H at WrestleMania 30, with the stipulation that if he won, he would be added to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship main event that night. Triple H initially mocked and dismissed Bryan's challenge, but the crowd's loud support for Bryan eventually led the game to accept the challenge in a heated exchange, vowing to end the Yes movement. WWE confirmed the match, setting the stage for one of WrestleMania 30's most anticipated encounters. The winner would join the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match against Randy Orton and Batista later that night. On the night, Bryan emerged victorious in his only match against Triple H, leading to an unforgettable moment in wrestling history. After Daniel Bryan's historic victory at WrestleMania 30, Triple H, Batista and Orton attempted to seize the championship from Bryan the following night, but The Shield backed him up and prevented this. This conflict laid out the foundation for a heated rivalry between The Shield and Evolution. The mounting tension between the two factions kept up during an episode of Raw on May 12, 2014, where Batista and Roman Reigns engaged in a match. However, the bout was disrupted by both factions leading to a chaotic altercation with no winner. Batista was nearing the end of his wrestling career that same year, while Reigns was ascending to greater heights. It's not hard to think about a fantasy match between them for the WWE Championship. However, unfortunately, with Batista absent, this couldn't happen. Edge and Sheamus had been in the wrestling industry for several years without ever facing each other in a singles match. However, they did share the ring on multiple occasions between 2009 and 2011. In 2010, both were part of a high-octane fatal four-way match where John Cena defended his WWE Championship against Sheamus, Edge, and Randy Orton. They had several confrontational segments that year where Sheamus and Edge actually attacked each other. Edge's retirement in 2011 potentially prevented a long-term rivalry between him and Sheamus. However, Edge finally challenged Sheamus to a singles match after his return on an episode of SmackDown on August 11, 2023, marking their first one-on-one -on -one encounter in their illustrious careers. The match held symbolic significance as Edge emerged victorious, marking the end of his tenure with WWE. In yet another unusual encounter between two babyfaces, John Cena and Jeff Hardy found themselves facing off in the ring. Before their clash, Cena and Hardy shared the ring together as they teamed up as tag partners on a few occasions in 2006 and 2008. However, in the lead up to this showdown, Jeff Hardy displayed his strength by overcoming the challenge of the Samoan bulldozer Umaga in a Falls Count Anywhere match just one day prior. During the segment on Raw on June 2nd, 2008, Hardy issued the challenge to Cena for their match. For the first time ever, Jeff Hardy versus John Cena. The stakes were high as the winner of their match would earn the opportunity to challenge Triple H for the WWE title, adding an extra layer of intensity to their clash. Despite both being fan favorites, Cena's status as the top face in the company and Hardy's rising popularity created an intriguing dynamic. Ultimately, Cena emerged victorious, setting the stage for his championship showdown with Triple H. On the July 22nd, 2002 episode of Raw, the show kicked off with The Rock reveling in his triumph as the new undisputed champion. As The Rock was addressing the crowd, Eddie Guerrero interrupted, attacking The Rock verbally and challenging him that very night. Guerrero declared that if he won, their next encounter would be for the Undisputed Championship the following week. The main event was anticipated, given the star power of The Rock and the growing reputation of Eddie Guerrero. The Rock ultimately secured the victory with the people's elbow. The match might not have had a lot of significance at the time since Eddie Guerrero wasn't yet seen as championship material. It wasn't until after 2003 that he began to ascend to the status of world champion. Their singles encounter in 2002 left fans wondering what could have been if they'd clashed during Guerrero's peak in 2004. In a memorable and historic clash, China defended her women's championship against Lita at WWE Judgment Day on May 20, 2001, in what would become China's final WWE match. The encounter brought together two of the most iconic figures in women's professional wrestling, each leaving a lasting legacy in the industry. China, known as the ninth wonder of the world, broke barriers with her powerful physique and dominant in-ring presence. As a member of D-Generation X, she competed against male wrestlers and held the Intercontinental Championship, establishing herself as a pioneer in the industry, while Lita, with her high-flying style and punk rock attitude, revolutionized women's wrestling with her athleticism and charisma. As a key figure in the Hardy Boys team Extreme, she inspired a generation of female wrestlers and fans with her fearless in-ring performances. The match was a showcase of contrasting styles. Ultimately, this showdown not only highlighted their immense talents, but also marked a significant moment in WWE history, as the champion's reign concluded with a decisive victory before her departure from the company. Two of the most legendary and powerful figures in professional wrestling history, celebrated for their undefeated streaks and formidable in-ring presence, finally clashed in a much anticipated showdown.
Khan. We're talking about The Undertaker and Goldberg who faced off at WWE Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia on June 7, 2019. Despite a brief but intense build-up, the announcement alone generated massive excitement amongst wrestling fans worldwide, eager to see these titans clash in the ring for the first time. WWE leveraged the legendary status of both superstars, highlighting their dominance and the dream match nature of this encounter. What's interesting about this matchup is that in the late 1990s, these two men, they were pillars of their shows. However, the match didn't meet the high expectations set by the fans and the storied careers of the wrestlers. Both Undertaker and Goldberg were beyond their prime, and their in-ring performance reflected this reality. The bout was riddled with several botches and awkward moments, detracting from the overall spectacle. The match concluded with The Undertaker delivering a choke slam for the victory, but it was evident that neither wrestler was at their best. Their advanced age and inactivity led to one of the worst matches ever. He was really disappointed, and I was disappointed. This dejected look on my face, and there was, because I was upset. Despite failing to meet expectations, The Undertaker vs Goldberg served as a nostalgic moment for fans who had long awaited this clash between two of wrestling's greatest icons. And it's another match that leaves fans wondering what could have happened if they'd faced each other in their primes. The match between Brock Lesnar and Daniel Bryan took place at Survivor Series on November 18, 2018 and was highly anticipated due to the stark contrast between the two superstars as Bryan's unexpected victory over AJ Styles just days before the event set the stage for this champion vs champion showdown. Fans were eager to see how Bryan's cunning and technical skills would match up against Lesnar's overwhelming power. Despite the anticipation, none of the titles were on the line. The match was part of a larger event known for its brand warfare between Raw and SmackDown. Raw emerged victorious, winning all six matches on the card, with Lesnar ultimately securing a win with an F5, showcasing his dominance over Bryan. The first ever Elimination Chamber match at Survivor Series 2002 was a historic moment, and Shawn Michaels emerged victorious, capturing the World Heavyweight Championship. Following this landmark win, the stage was set for Michaels to defend his newly won title against the winner of a triple threat match between Booker T, Rob Van Dam, and Chris Jericho. In addition to buying for a title shot, each competitor in the triple threat match had the chance to face Michaels for the first time in their career. Rob Van Dam emerged victorious, setting up a highly anticipated encounter between him and Michaels. A week later on the November 25th, 2002 episode of Raw, the match delivered as expected, showcasing impressive technical skills in the closing moments of their match. RVD executed a five-star frog splash on HBK, seemingly on the verge of victory. However, Triple H intervened, disrupting the match before the referee could count to three. In the weeks leading up to the November 10th, 2003 episode of Raw, Triple H sought someone to take out Goldberg, the reigning World Heavyweight Champion. To motivate potential challengers, Triple H placed a $100,000 bounty on Goldberg's head. Various superstars attempted to claim the bounty, but it was Batista who ultimately succeeded. On the October 20th, 2003 episode of Raw, during Goldberg's match against Michaels, which was another once-in-a-lifetime match, Batista attacked both competitors, snapping Goldberg's ankle and collecting the bounty. Consequently, Goldberg missed the following Raw because of this. On November 3rd, 2003, Goldberg requested a one-on-one -on -one match against Batista, scheduled for the following week. This clash promised to be an explosive encounter, given the physical prowess and intense style of both competitors. But unfortunately, the match lasted less than two minutes, with Triple H interrupting the match. Four months later, Goldberg left WWE, and we never had the chance to witness a prime Batista facing him. The feud between Roman Reigns and Triple H began in late 2015 and carried into early 2016, with Reigns consistently defying the authority. After Seth Rollins' knee injury and the subsequent forfeiture of his title, Triple H tried to recruit Reigns to join the authority and secure the championship, but Reigns refused, determined to win the title on his own terms. Triple H's dissatisfaction with Reigns' refusal symbolized a power struggle and a clash of interests, fueling their rivalry over the following months. At Survivor Series 2015, Reigns won the championship by defeating Dean Ambrose in the finals, but Sheamus immediately cashed in his Money in the Bank contract and took the title. Reigns regained the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the December 14, 2015 episode of Raw by defeating Sheamus. The tension climaxed at the 2016 Royal Rumble, where Triple H entered as the 30th entrant, eliminated Reigns, and won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This served their only match against each other at WrestleMania 32, where Reigns ultimately emerged victorious, marking the climax of their intense feud. Both Jeff Hardy and Shawn Michaels share several similarities despite their differences in career trajectory and era of dominance. They both have a reputation for high-flying, daredevil in-ring styles that captivate audiences. Additionally, both have experienced personal struggles and triumphs throughout their careers, endearing them to fans on a deeper level. Furthermore, they're both known for their iconic moments and ladder matches showcasing their innovative and risk-taking approaches to professional wrestling. Going back to 2003, Hardy and Michael shared various segments and teamed up on a few occasions. A match between them at this point might not have generated much excitement due to the significant difference in their positions within the wrestling hierarchy. At that time, Jeff Hardy wasn't yet the level of stardom he would later achieve, while Michaels was already a legend. However, Jeff Hardy's departure from WWE in 2003 meant a potential showdown with Shawn Michaels wasn't on the cards. Luckily, years later, they faced each other for the first and only time. In the lead-up to the Elimination 
Chamber match, it often sees participants facing off in singles matches prior to the show. And in an episode of Raw on February 11, 2008, Jeff Hardy and Shawn Michaels squared off in a rare face-to-face -face encounter on Raw. Hardy emerged victorious over Michaels after executing a swanton bomb in a truly exhilarating match. Bret Hart and The Rock are two legendary figures in the world of professional wrestling, each with a distinct legacy. However, their paths only crossed one time in the WWF. The encounter between the two took place on the March 31st, 1997 episode of Raw. At this point in their careers, Bret Hart was an established veteran and a multi-time world champion, while The Rock, then known as Rocky Maivia, was still relatively new to the company, having debuted in late 1996. Rocky Maivia defended his Intercontinental title against one of the greatest to ever hold that belt. The Hitman did his best to guide Maivia through a competitive match, ensuring that the future Great One looked strong. Despite the respectable back and forth, the match ended when Hart was disqualified for refusing to release his ring post figure four leg lock upon the referee's command. Though this match wasn't a legendary bout, it holds historical significance as the sole singles match between these two icons. Now if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video of 20 minutes of iconic WWE moments that led to a legendary run. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.